we're going to begin an exciting panel. Uh, on the billing, we're going to be talking about the challenges and opportunities of convergence. And actually, this is a fantastic panel because in an event like this that predominantly came from the distributor community, it's very important to have a good spectrum across the supply chain that could lead to possible convergence. Because maybe back in the day we were talking a lot more about a single individual and today maybe that's not where we're going but we'll get into that on our panel uh, from left to right you'll see we have ellie hurst uh, head of marcom and media at advent im we're very pleased to be joined by owen miles field cto at cm everbridge mark carney global security portfolio management at cisco and Letitia emiana the aces uk chapter chair I'm, I'm very pleased to be here in Birmingham today and it's exciting to run this panel uh, for you all uh, because actually I think we can make some progress. Hopefully we can make a little bit of progress where all these other panels are just talking and, and, and that's what we're trying to go for today. So let's start off with this concept and maybe I'll start off with you uh, Owen because you have the mic. Is it the case that maybe 10-15 years ago we talked about convergence as the single individual. Does that single uber script kitty special forces actuarial scientist, does it exist? Is it desirable? Uh, thank you. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Are we good? Wonderful. Um, in fact, I, I, I was presenting earlier on today and, and I used a bit of a line that I think might be appropriate, which is um, you can put a traffic cone on a horse, but it doesn't make it a unicorn. The problem is that the unicorn is mythical as well. So I, I, the way I kind of view it is you don't have to be able to play an oboe to know when an oboe needs to be played. And so these senior roles should be the conductors of the orchestra, not rushing around trying to play every instrument and do everything and know everything. And for me, that's how you actually achieve a, a, a convergence is trusting in the people that you employ rather than trying to do everything yourself. And, and, uh, but to be honest, I would love to meet the, the, the CISO that has 20 years experience in digital, in 20 years in physical security, 20 years in HR, 20 years. I'm not quite sure how old they are and when they started the role, but I'd love to meet them. We'd love, love to meet them. And in fact, why don't, we, why don't we take a step back? If they were to exist, what kind of a career path this sing, single individual might have? Ellie. I know, I know you and uh, your, your colleague Mike have previously spoken at things and you, you, you have a view about the possible existence of a singular path. Um, I wonder if you could elaborate on this. I think it's more about um, looking at the way people find their way into security specialisms. And although I agree with, with everything you just said, <laughs> naturally, um, I think the... No, I know that's not. No, we'll, we'll have a dust up later. but. Um, I think because we seem to specialise so early, like you, so you're going to be in man guarding, um, you're going to be in close protection, you're going to be a cyber specialist, you know, and that grounding in general um, and a broad base understanding of m multiple disciplines, you don't need to be an expert in all of them. And so the singular sci um, ex security expert, converged expert, I'm not sure how helpful they would be or whether anybody could actually afford one, even if they did exist. Um, but I think um, the future is in teams that are uh, sufficiently converged in their skill sets and that we have a path into security that comes from a grounding in general security so that they are um, at least understanding each of the disciplines and so therefore are able to have the conversations with the actual experts in those disciplines who are their colleagues in their teams. I like that because that makes them dangerous, doesn't it? It makes them dangerous enough to have a good conversation. Um, but anyway, I don't want to put my words into your mouth. Uh, Mark, um, what, what, then, what then do we want to converge? Because um, at an event such as this, we have lots of installers, that you're, you're rather rare in that you're a cyber specialist. And yet we want you on this panel. We want to talk about convergence. But what, what are we converging? Yeah, I, thanks for the question. So I think in terms of what we're converging, we need to take the data that these disparate systems, infrastructure, platforms, whether it be 
remote access, whether it be CCTV systems, and actually use that data to make good security business decisions. And it might be around the access control piece. It might be to identify threat actors. It might be to identify insider threats to our organization. Maybe use behavior analytics to be able to work out whether we have risks to our corporate identity or we have risks to our intellectual property. There's loads of ways you can start to use this data and leverage the technology to actually make better business decisions. I agree with a lot of what's been said already in terms of that, that unicorn or that hyper specialist. The great, what we need to do is use the data and be uh, advocates of technology to drive those business decisions, advocates of technology use and data use where it protects our organizations and our people. Uh, it could be patient records, it could be other kind of crown jewels type data, but it's really important that we leverage that technology and be the caretakers of that technology, especially as we move down this uh, you know, generative AI and chat GPT. It's really important that we don't um, and I heard something yesterday called hallucinations and with AI, hallucinations and coming up with false narratives for AI engines is a real problem. So being able to take all that data, make sure that it's, and us as advocates and caretakers, we need to be able to look at that data and make human-led decisions as to, uh, as to its robustness. I like that. Human, human-led decisions. Um, I, th I think maybe that is one of the core of convergence, at least yet, at least still, you know, still some uh, human in the loop. Um, but Letitia, I guess, uh, are we then looking at all this technology as an integrator of teams? And, and, and in that case, how many teams and what teams? Are we talking about facilities? Are we talking about HR? Um, some people say cyber is a dirty word because it's just security in another domain. So, so Letitia, what, what sort of domains, what sort of integration are we looking at? So, in my day job and, and the way I'm bringing about the convergence, uh, I'm, I'm transitioning uh, legacy systems at the moment for a global organization. And I'm not an expert in everything, but I, I know what I need and I know, I think, how to do it. Um, so I did have to educate some of these teams and bring them on the journey with me because I've developed like a change board and in that change board, back to your point, it's uh, the facilities management, it's the work um, place teams, it's the real estate teams, it's the procurement teams, it's the enterprise architecture, it's the networking teams. Um, and you know, they don't report to me, um, but I've educated them as to what we're trying to achieve as an organization. And we have um, like a, a weekly change board, half an hour, an hour's conversation. We bring up the use cases that we're seeing around the globe and we solution it there and then. And we're in transition. It's not a solution yet. I can't put it down on paper and, and do anything. But back to your point, um, as the security lead there, I'm the caretaker of what we're bringing together. And this is multidisciplinary, multifunctioning now. And I think this is the game changer that we have these technologies that have uses outside of security. And that is, for me, the corporate benefit of what we're doing. We're now operations. We're in the operations team. We're able to bring in all of these teams and give them the data that they need. I love that because that, that plays into the, the Department of Everything narrative. You know, over, over the last three years, I won't mention what happened, but over the last few years, uh, corporate security seemed to become the Department of Everything. It was the department that had to really step up. And, and so it's wonderful at an event such as this that we talk convergence because I know that, yes, it's an installer event and there's a cyber side and, and so on, but this is, this is a great uh, combination. Well, let's go back and, uh, and, and, and sort of start with our first panelist, uh, Owen. Um, are we then looking at technology as leverage? And, and if we are, what are we leveraging? And you know, because when we say convergence, it's often sparkly box syndrome. It's like I've got the best sparkly box, and therefore I'm converged. Um, I, I don't think that's quite accurate, though. I, I would agree with you 100%. Um, I, I think there's something to factor into this, which is a very powerful force that affects all of us, and it's called inertia and I'm in my comfy little place using my tool sets and this scary person with a big job title comes down from on high and says convergence and then departs and someone then shows me a shiny silvery box and goes yeah you have to do everything inside that box but I like my tools and I want to use my tools 
and that's where technology delivers on convergence. So without, it, it, it's a bit like, you know, for years I've heard people talking about breaking down silos. Reality is, if we broke down the silo in every business, we'd never get anything done because we'd all be still trying to get into the meeting room to have the one meeting to decide what we're calling our company name. So we all have to operate within teams, within silos, but it's those information bridges. And I apologise, I work for Everbridge, it's a bit of a bad pun, me calling them information bridges. Hands up, apologies. But you know, if we can't do that, if we can't create that interoperability between the different teams, the different technologies, we never achieve convergence. So for me, that's what the technology is there to do, is not to change an individual's world, it's to move them closer to everybody else's. I like that. And, and that, I mean, someone made an analogy in a previous event, you don't have to be a metallurgist to operate a firearm, right? You, you codeless compute is great fun for people like me who I have not got the nous to learn to code. But, Ellie, going back to skill set, um, what do you think this will do to the skill set needed if technology is the leverage? Um, what, 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 what's, what's the skill set then? Um, surely all these wonderful tools that are complex now will be less complex in the future to use. So what skill set do we need to use inherently less complex tools? Oh gosh, that's, that's, that's quite the question. Sorry. <laughs> that was about eight questions. Sorry, yes. <laughs> um, let me think. I think if I could just go back to basics and effectively to what Letitia was saying, I mean, absolutely amazing. I think part of the problem when we talk about convergence is it became the next buzzword and it was after everyone had just got over holistic. Nobody knew what that meant. Right, so nobody understood what holistic was, still don't understand what holistic is. And then we moved on to convergence, nobody really understood that. Actually, w when, we, when we talk about breaking down silos and our use of technology, and everyone's relationship with their te technology is going to be different, what we're actually talking about is how we communicate with each other, because what we're trying to do is deliver business objectives. Right? That's what we're all here to do. We're here to help our business deliver on its objectives in the most secure way that we possibly can. So we're there to enable that. So I think the technology will be what it needs to be. It needs to be there to support the people. So we need the best possible technology with the best possible people who are trained well enough to use it and to be able to gain the insight from it, to be able to communicate back to the business about this is what we need to be doing, which is effectively what Letitia is doing. I like that, and, and also to your previous point that I put in your mouth, dangerous. <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> you, you have to be dangerous. Um, but Mark, I, I wonder then, you know, we, we've seen examples of executive protection colleagues, corporate security colleagues, going off and learning to code, doing Harvard CS50, Introduction to Computer Science, and then they realize that they can't be a developer, or they're not going to be in, without a lot of effort. So, so how do we reconcile that? Because surely the converged leader it, it is far too strategic to be technical now. Yeah, absolutely. I think we do expect a huge amount from the individuals that we employ into our organizations. And I've seen some horrific job descriptions over the years, one of which I remember uh, asked for three years GDPR compliance experience two years before we actually launched in EMEA. So you know, this is kind of impossible. So I think, gen yeah, it's a time travel as well. So. The challenge that we've got is to effectively lead teams, you have to achieve what the, the business objective is. Issaca and the um, information security mandates, they all depend or rely on a single thing, which is the business has to function, the business has to continue. And if business continuation is achieved in a secure manner, then you've achieved the, the, the right outcomes for your business. So in protecting that business, what you're doing is you are bringing together the uh, skills, the technologies, uh, and the people, effectively the people, the process, and technology to achieve the outcomes you need as an organization. But if there is to be a converged leader, isn't it going to be a, a sort of a, a rivalry between, oh, I was once an architect, a security a cyber engineer, and, oh, I, I was once in the Special Forces. Is, 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 is that a, a rivalry that will play out? So I, I think it's more about leadership capability 
uh, and caretaking as opposed to specific skills in specific areas. So yes, you need to understand the industry that you're in. You need to understand that they are, there are technologies and there are people and process to achieve that outcome. If you focus on one thing, if you are uh, a 20 year, ad, you know, 20 year programmer, um, and you understand the, the tool sets that are in security, then that's great. But can you effectively lead those teams to achieve the business outcome? Um, so if those superstar unicorns do exist, then fantastic. And they're probably on huge salaries somewhere. What people need to focus on when they're writing these job descriptions is understand that leadership is key. Diversity in skill sets is also incredibly important, and diversity in the thought processes, so different backgrounds, different uh, ethnicities, different areas of, you know, because I work on a global scale, uh, and the influences I get from all over the world, the challenges that we have in our go-to-market in India is very, very different from our go-to-market strategy in North America. Uh, and that's the reality of it. And we have to, we have to adapt, and we have to bring in different leaders that have got regional and cultural um, experience as well as that knowledge at a higher level of the industry that, that we come from. And I think that's really important to achieve those business outcomes. I like that and, that, and, and, that, and that's a wonderful addition to the convergence debate because you know, it's not just cyber and physical, it's, it's culture, it's, it's everything. But Letitia, we spoke before about breaking down silos and maybe, you know, as uh, Owen said, it might be inoperable if we broke down all the silos because um, that's may maybe too many. But what then should this structure look like? Should it be all about just freedom to communicate, a few hierarchies, expectation that they're going to hear from you even though they're an actuary? Is, 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 it, is it about expectations? I think, I think the principle that I would work from is you've got to have your objective first. You know, and otherwise, what's the point of having communication? And, and once you know what it is you're trying to achieve, you know who you may need to target in order to influence and shape and share the vision and the strategy. So I think for me, it's, it's where you've got... It's, re it's quite difficult to explain, I think. And the reason being is where we have seen teams who have freedom like I do to, to reach out to whoever I need to that I think I can influence um, but then you've got that hard cold sell as well like who are you what like why are you from security speaking to me so you've also then got to be really good at the story you've really got to know what you're trying to achieve from that person and ultimately everybody wants to help everybody they just need to be asked well how can I help what is it you see that I can do and then they'll know somebody else. And, and before you know it, what I've found is the networking internally, people then know she needs to know about this actually. And, and that open communication is, is, I think it just develops over time, but you've got to have your initial purpose first, have your story, understand what it is you want them to give you in order for you to help them. It's, it's very, it's an organic way of growing, but if it's working for me at the moment in that global, in that global way. Trust, yes, total, absolutely. If, if, if you can, I mean, I, Unilever it just does a lot to, for me because that's my day job, but um, it's all about your purpose. If you understand your own purpose and the business's purpose, it's so much easier because everybody's business objectives, you, you've got that induction, we've got a nice culture. You sing to people in a way that just helps people want to help you and grow with you. So I think it's an organic thing, but you do also have to have the agility and the freedom of the communication and that open door policy, whilst it doesn't always work, and I think lower, lower grade or lower people, uh, what, I don't mean lower, as in, you know, when you're new entrants and, mm. and you don't want that hierarchical and you try to give that psychological safety and open door, they still won't talk to you. You know, so I think there's still something more to do in these spaces, but generally the agility and the freedom of communication, I think, is what is doing it. And I love that story. You have a story. That's, that's going to make it work for you. The business objective is carried by the story. Um, but you have to be dangerous with this. I don't know. I'm, I'll try and bring it back in. Um, but Owen, going, going back to the technology question, because when we speak convergence, we're often thinking all things technical as well, right? We, we talk about technical skill sets. Is the ultimate end goal of that threat intel? 
Is, is threat intel the only thing that every function would have any real business creating a story about? That's a very interesting question. Uh, and, and I think it's a starting point. Because ultimately, if everything's fine and we're all getting on with our day, I don't see why do we need to communicate, because we always should be communicating, but there's no business requirement to do so. So I would say that that is the starting point of the, of the collaboration, of the communication, the coordination. But actually, you have to be sharing throughout the entire, you know, if we start thinking about you know, a, a business impact, something happening, which threat intelligence would be the, the initiator of. But actually, unless you can see, are we on track to recover, to respond, you have to have the operational view at the same point as the helicopter and probably the satellite view, because otherwise you can't course correct mid-response. You know, I can't turn around and say, actually, I need another million pounds to solve this problem, and if I don't, it's going to cost me 20 million pounds, without having that collaborative um, coordination of every single team. Yeah, it, it, I think historically, and, and it does remind me of a, a, one of my favorite stories about 15 years ago talking to an IT team uh, and about their digital response and you know how would you tell everyone else and they said well we wouldn't communicate I said, well why not I said, well they'd know what do you mean they'd know yeah we don't tell them we have a problem if they call us or they call the help desk then we'll let them know we've got a problem but we don't act proactively do anything and I think that has significantly changed mm. I think we went through a period of my side of the street is clean and that's fine so long as what you're not doing is pushing all the rubbish onto the other side of the street. If you're cleaning your side of the street, great, but you need to check, is everybody else's street clean? I like that. I'm going to use that. Is my side of the street clean? Um, and, you know... Uh, but, but remembering, you're not shoveling rubbish to someone else. Well, yeah, You've it, got to pick your rubbish up and their rubbish that's on your side of the street. And, and there are famous examples of uh, city councils, some places in the world, that basically... You know, um, and and this is why ACES is so good because it brings together the disparate groups to try and avoid some of that, uh, which 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 I, which I think because Ellie, I mean, surely you've observed. <laughs> you know, I'm doing it in order. One, two, three. You know, um, we were trying to guess. <laughs> you know, because because loss, you know, the loss prevention community doesn't particularly know the luxury community, doesn't particularly know the gambling community, doesn't particularly know the EP, you know, um, these communities can only be brought together with an association like ACES, which is why we're very pleased to be on Definitely. the stand. But, 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 but threat intel, is that the only fundamental thing that they're going to have to talk to each other about? I think it's a great tool to start a conversation. Um, business leaders use intelligence and information all the time it's the lifeblood of every if you want to have a if you want to speak to a business leader you you better have your stuff together you better have some intelligence and i don't see security as being any different it's the start of the conversation it's not the whole conversation but it creates a great framework for you to start that conversation and rather than base it on fud you know the fear uncertainty and doubt you can you can base it on something actual something real and then you're actually talking about your organization. You're talking about the well-being of your organization. You know, it's health. So I think it's vital. I do think it's absolutely vital. I think bringing the uh, community together from these disparate groups of security through organizations like ACES is crucial, absolutely crucial. So we can meet each other, talk to one another, learn from one another, and build those relationships. Um, to help that conversation so that when it comes to building the story we can say okay so we've got the intelligence and we know what this group thinks and we know what this group thinks and we know what this group thinks here's our combined story here's not the story the story from the cyber team here's the story mm. and that and that story will go to management because management deal in uh, single panes of glass and you know dashboards and things and you mentioned FUD uh, fear mm. uncertainty and doubt and Mark, certainly in the cyber vendor world, there are vendors that you know, thrive on y using FUD against a, a CEO just on the off chance he doesn't quite know. Um, but, 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 but going back to this, 
would the only reason you or any other cyber specialist provides cyber threat intel, w w would that be the glue? I mean, is everyone a node? Is everything a node? Yeah, that's... <coughs> so when we bring in... Threat intelligence is something that we use to make business decisions. So it is, it is the glue. Convergence is something that where we can start to use different, technolo different technologies to provide telemetry to make better dis decisions. The challenge that we've got there is it creates an incredible amount of data. And that data is hard to analyze. No human can analyze the volumes of data that these disparate technology solutions present. So we have to get better at utilizing advances in technology, especially around artificial intelligence, et cetera, to be able to comb through that data so that it enables us to make better business decisions. So it is the glue, that threat intelligence is the glue, but the threat intelligence can come from various different places. Every person, every behavior, every technology use is a node. Um, and when we look at network uh, analytics, we are actually looking for behavioral changes. So. You know, did somebody log on, does somebody usually log on to their PC and open email at 8 a.m. most days? And if that ha doesn't happen at those times, is that an alert or is that an incident? So do we have to, do we have to escalate that alert or that con uh, provide context and enrichment that says, well, they logged on at 8 a.m. after coming through and being biometrically scanned through the access control system, and we've got their facial recognition through the camera system, actually, they are here. And that login from Nigeria didn't exist, so we need to block that IP address. And that we can build automated workflows around those kind of things and make us more effective. But combing through that data, having those integrations with those technologies are just not there. And we need to get better at integrating technology with a secure design framework that enables access to APIs, um, you know, protection on access to those APIs as well, so that we can share data through te technology vendors to produce an outcome for the customer. And the customer could be Unilever, it could be Cisco, it could be you know, Everbright, it could be anybody. Um, that outcome is specific to their business, but we need to find that and align to it. And, and that would add value, wouldn't it? And, well, and I, you'd hope so. And you, we're, we're, so, so, and, and I know we have a panel tomorrow on, on value adding. That's why I, I said that to you, Mark. But, um, Letitia, then, if we are using this te technology to make everyone a node, you can imagine the the guards going around with their sticks uh, or whatever devices they use, and they are transmitting data. They haven't got time to write everything up, and you know, sh sh surely that's the end result. You're harnessing all of that data, that telemetry, they're all your nodes, uh, just as your cyber colleagues are more nodes. Are they not? Uh, it's, it's all about everyone being a node. That, that's what convergence is. It depends whether you're talking about systems or, um, and again, I think when, when we talk like that, uh, yes, you're right. We should be leveraging the opportunity of everybody being able to give us something that will add value. But what and why do we have to capture that value? We have to ask the question, is it actually valuable or do we just think it's valuable? Because otherwise the investment is wasted. So I think, um, you know, I love the idea. I, I too am doing something where I want to be able to connect the geolocation of an officer to the incident so that we don't just do a mass call out for there's an incident, you know. So it be becomes more actionary. It becomes intelligence led. But the investment, you've got to know what you want. And just going back to that previous point, it was going through my head that we have incidents day to day, but if we're not thinking of the future and the strategic blue sky thinking now, then that's what slows us down as well. So I, I love the analogy, you know, I, I regularly working between, you know, the aeroplane, um, the helicopter and the microscope and bouncing around. And I think it's important that you do that because you've got to see what challenges you've got today and you've got to understand what those might look like in the future so that you get the investment right now. Because investment just doesn't keep coming, right? You've got to build the plan. You've got to build what it is you're trying to achieve. Sell the dream, but deliver it today with no money. Uh, <laughs> you know, so it all has to play, play a part. But I think 
selling the vision and the strategy is the first part. So like I said, you know, understanding I want that mobile technology geolocated that links to the contextualization of the alarm on the on the turnstile and you know the camera picks up the contextualization gives me my POI and off I go but if that's what I want now I need to start designing the system like two years ago so I think that's where I'm coming from on, on hopefully answering mm. yes everybody's a node but in order to get there you've got to think about whether it's valuable in the first place I like that because if then you, you, you collect everybody's information and everyone's a node, but you're not sure why, then you'll need increasingly complex systems to process it, which means you then always have to create more nodes, which means you have a, a cycle. I, I think, Ellie, were you, you going to jump in there? Just, just a very small point to make that I think um, security teams have, are so frequently fighting the crocodiles nearest the boat that it's very hard for them to be able to be the um, expert partners to their organizations that they would like to be. And thinking about the node thing, but in probably a less technical way, having an empowered workforce that has security in mind as their business is, as usual can actually take some of the pressure off some of those security teams to allow them to do the planning for the stuff that they need to be doing in the future, the horizon scanning and the, and, the, and the strategizing that they need to do instead of, as I say, fighting whatever wildlife has come near whatever vehicle. I love it, uh, the crocodile closest to the, to the boat, um, which, uh, well, oh, I, yeah. I was actually gonna add something to that, yeah. and, and, and maybe a little gentle criticism, because um, I think the digital teams have been doing something really, really, really well for a long time and that's putting money behind what they do in the sense of the return on investment. And my digital friends hate me when I say, it. I think they've got it easy because we don't have the equivalent of the monitoring software we install on the laptop, on the phone, on the server. Well, until some, I'm, I'm sure someone here is inventing the chip that we all get installed and you know, we turn into robots. But you know, I, I think security could do something and I don't, I don't quite know what it is, but around how do we put a monetary value under what we're doing in the same way that digital do today. So that actually when you go for budget, you can say, well, if we don't do it, it's going to cost us X, which kind of makes it a no-brainer. Which kind of means you need to get to know your actuarial friends. <laughs> because there, there was an... If, if you let them out of the dungeon, yes. Well, <laughs> there, I remember quite clearly there was an ASIS colleague uh, a few years ago who, who made mention of the fact that because they worked in insurance, they had access to insurers, uh, actuaries, who were able to help uh, you know, put, put figures on things. Um, but going back to this idea of threat intel and um, you know, upskilling, I think we, 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 we on the pre-call said, well, what if we say that the, the place where convergence happens, that the real place, the home, could be the SOC. And, and by the SOC, we're not, we're not discriminating against different types of SOCs. Could be the V SOC, the I SOC, the G SOC, the ROC, the NOC, or other types of OX. Is it the logical home? Yes, other types of OX are available, yes. Um, I, yeah, I, I think as a conceptual idea, absolutely it is, it, it is the home. But I think you identify something really important because I think there is a perception when you talk about a SOC that you require a lot of people to, to run a SOC. You know, for each chair, you need eight employees. You don't want one chair, you want probably three. So you've got 24 people being employed to run a 24 seven operation. You don't want to do it in one place. You need to do it in two places. You've got to have redundant this X, Y, and Z. And, and, and going back to the point about budget, um, yeah, ouch. So, you know, for me, that's where technology really does become a game changer. You know, historically, we'd have these very highly secure, very pretty looking rooms that the CEO loved taking the big shareholders to. And I've been to some where they've got that sort of magical glass, or the electric glass where you flick a button and, and it goes from opaque to see-through. And the CEO would do it at, at key moments in meetings with shareholders of, you know, whenever he was a sticky moment, that boom, thrum, and he'd have everyone running around. They weren't actually doing anything, but, you know, it was just to make it look important. And, you know, this is why we need budget but for me if you know 
we want to democratize the ability to respond and that's what technology allows us to do it, it, it no longer is the playground of the very big and the very wealthy businesses you know it, it, it then starts to come down and levels so that actually you, the, the more masses can access these capabilities as opposed to the the privileged few I like it. Not democratization of luxury, but democratization of socks. Or, or resilience. Or resilience, okay. Um, Mark, what, what are your yeah, thoughts? Just, just on that, I, I agree with what you're saying, and I think it's really important that the sock should be a centralized, whether you call it a sock, and you know, if we talk about convergence, we need to converge the knock and the sock together. Um, we also need to converge the physical security elements as well. The, in order to be for that security operation to be successful is that they have to wade through the volumes of data that they get. Outtasking specific components of that security operation are going to be more cost effective. Now, if you take certain detection and response capabilities that are out there in the marketplace, it's really important to focus down on what is your business outcome, what are you trying to achieve, and who is best of breed to deliver that for you. And that gives you cost manageability over time. It's likely to come with a contract. It's likely to come with some SLAs. It's likely to come with some ob objectives that you want to achieve as a business. And the great thing about that, especially outsourcing or outtasking certain elements of the security operation, is actually you can be b become much more effective on concentrating on your core business. If your core business is fast-moving consumer goods, focus on fast-moving consumer goods. Don't invest all of your time and energy in building a SOC, whether that SOC's in the UK or in India, or it's a virtual SOC, or it's you know, cloud native. What you need to make sure is that you're focusing on your business continuity and outtasking those to the best of breed suppliers that you can find. I like that, because that's economies of scale, isn't it? It's economies of scale. It, it, it speaks to the um, uh, convergence within managed security services. Um, hey, even here, I've walked past several things that call themselves managed service providers, which is kind of funny because in, this, in the IT world, they also believe they're managed service providers. It's convergence. And, uh, and you know, I, I've even seen mobile managed security service providers now. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a fantastic place. But, Letitia, where does this then leave the future of the SOC as the idea of the natural home for convergence? So... That was floating through my mind because I believe, again, maybe it's just uh, the sort of area that I'm working in, but I genuinely believe it's going to be virtual. And I genuinely believe that when we get really super clever at this, it will prioritize the tasks, you know, that whole element of the machine learning elements coming in. And that sort can be anywhere, which is mobile. It can respond to where it needs to focus. It can deploy the resources where it needs to be deployed, effectively becoming much more efficient over time. But it still says, where is the home? And I, I, and I, I believe it still sits with the leadership. I think the leadership have to take responsibility for um, the, the, the converged centralization of the vision of what this is trying, uh, or, or what we're talking about, trying to bring it together. Because let's say the worker bees, that's, you know, that's, who we, that's what we do. We bring that together, we make it operational, but at the end of the day, the caretaker, the home, the owners is the leadership, the executive leaders. They have to know about this, they have to want it and be behind it as well. So whilst everybody gets it on paper, Sometimes I, I, I'm a big advocate of storytelling. We have to keep the story. We have to keep it alive. We have to sometimes update it and you know, call it version 2.0. But, but the point is, it's still the same narrative. It might just take a few deviations, but they have to be behind it as well. And I believe the home is actually at the leadership because I think we're moving away from figuratively people and bums on seats in locations. And I think, I also believe that the convergence with um, sort of building management and everything like that means that you, you just have a true ops team now rather than a SOC or a, you know, it's just one converged operational team. Yeah, like, like the office of the CSO. Funny that, yeah. Yeah, we don't know who's in it. We, ju <laughs> we just know it's the office. Um, 
Well, you know, lots of aspects we could maybe still touch on, IT, OT, IoT, things like that, but I, but I think for a panel in an event such as this with the ACES uh, community, I think this is a great uh, tour de force around it, and I dare say we did push the needle somehow. Uh, we did move the debate forward, I, I swear we did. Um, so, 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 so thank you very much for joining us. Wonderful to be here in uh, Birmingham. Uh, please give Ellie, Owen, Mark, and Letitia a big round of applause, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks, Pelham.